Evening ladies and gents, uh, my name is Simon Brown. So th the thinking here this evening is to, to step it up. We've been doing the boot camp videos. There are 12 of them. They're online at justonelap.com slash bootcamp. And that really is the background theory around trading, around managing risk, around understanding products and gearing and all of those bits and pieces and the like. Um, and that's well and needed. And now we've got that content there. We now move it to the next part of the process, which is the trading masterclass, which says, right, we've got that base level of, of knowledge and, 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 and skill and ability. Now we need to actually put it into practice and move it to that next level, which kicks off now with this evening. So this evening we're looking at an equity system, uh, an equity trading system. Uh, the process will be in two parts. There walks in Charles. Charles wave. Everyone look at Charles. <laughs> uh, here's your resident IG expert. If you've got <laughs> platform related questions, accounts, charts, anything like that, he's your man. You, you can try me, but, but trust me, Charles is your man. Um, <laughs> teach you for coming in a minute late. <laughs> you were here a moment ago and then you left. No, that's cool. So trading masterclass and, and the way the process will work is we're we going to do these through to the end of the year. There'll be a first event here at IG. It is being webcast at the same time and then a follow up webcast only in two weeks time. Um, and this evening will be the practical around the trading and then in two weeks we'll take it that extra step further and I'll delve it into how that works. Obviously if you're in the webcast right now you're automatically booked for that. If you're physically sitting here at IG you just go to justonelap.com uh, slash masterclass slash events you'll find it you can attend those and of course the videos get uploaded within a day so you know don't stress it if you can't make one or the other there, there, there are videos. But it really is to help you leave here this evening with at least the genesis of something that you can start trading and profiting from. That's the key point. And I say the genesis because there'll be some more stages the next video in two weeks. There'll be some questions and some challenges, but certainly with that genesis. And there's a couple of very important points that I need to, to, to put out right now. Firstly, I am as a rule a trend based trader, so they're going to be trend orientated. I am a lazy trader, so they're going to be lazy orientated. What I mean by lazy is this is not a day trading process. Yes, you could scale it to any time frame, but I'm not going to show you the five minute chart time frame type of trading. That's not what I want to achieve. I'm not convinced that's the right way to, to go about it. I was saying to Charles, one of the things is if we get into trading carefully and gently, uh, we have a lot better chance of survival because if we trade slower and more cautiously, we're less likely to go bust and we're more likely to learn how to trade before we go bust. So that the two critical important points. And the last point here, this is not going to make you rich in a hurry. There are two things that make you rich in a hurry. One, rob banks. Terrible idea. They don't keep cash anymore and they shoot back. Second thing, marry money. <laughs> this is going to help you become a trader. A trader is something which we do for the rest of our life and we profit from. If you want to be rich by Friday, go find the, the rich single people of Santon. Go hang out with them. That's how you're going to make that work. <clears throat> so laws are gentle, uh, too gentle, seldom obeyed, too severe, seldom executed. And that's one of my key challenges. I'm a rules-based trader and I can make this 100% rules-based so much so that if you just blink wrong, you're going to get black marks against you. No one's going to follow that. I can take it to the other extreme and say no rules if it's going up by it. No one's going to follow that either. So I've tried to walk a kind of gentle line uh, in, in, the, in the middle in a sense. And what's important, if you include the webcast and the people here this evening, 200 folks listening live, every one of you are going to want to maybe make, do it slightly different. And that's fine. You take something, you implement it, you make the tweaks that make sense to you, and you run with it. Inversely, you do it as is, that's equally fine as well. So a stock trading system, here are the overall system rules. We trade top 40 shares only. That's just simply for liquidity reasons. They're more liquid, they have tighter spreads, easier to get out of, easier to get into, less worries around liquidity. If you're trading one of the second or third tier stocks, liquidity becomes a serious problem. Uh, long only. So we're only making money on rising shares. Which means when shares are all going down, we sit in cash. Now we can go short and we can make money in falling markets. But if you reference back to some of my videos where I've talked about it, tr making money on the short side is incredibly difficult. You've got a couple of challenges against you. Firstly, a lot more volatility. In other words, the bounces are severe. So if you get it right, you'll bounce your way into profit. 
And if you get it wrong, you'll get bounced way past your stop loss and into pain and suffering. And there's a bunch around. So, you know, I, I, I do in most of my trading systems, only one do I do any short trading. And next month we're going to look at indices and we will include short trading in the index space as well. But as a rule, I don't do short trading at all. 2% risk per trade, there's an entire video on that and I will go into more detail on that. Max portfolio gearing of two times, again a video and again I will go into more detail on that as well. Um, Two-step entry system. I always use two-step entry systems. We'll come into that and then exits and then perfect trades. So we'll go through the whole component. We'll go through all the bits and pieces. Uh, folks frantically taking photos and stuff, you're welcome to. Uh, but if you drop me a mail, I can send you the PDF. Go to the website in the morning. It will be online. Let's not say in the morning. Go to the website tomorrow after lunch. Just one lap.com after lunch. The video will be online. You can grab it there. So the first point is we got to find that list of top 40 stocks. So we log into IG, we go to uh, click on watch lists, we got SA40 constituents. Couldn't be easier if we tried. Boom, window pops up. There are your top 40 stocks, all of them. Now we need to go to a particular chart uh, and I've I picked Aspen as my first one. You click on that little, what looks like a little mountain or something. You click on that, the chart will pop up. The, the, the key thing with this is that ultimately we will go through all 40 but at this point, I've just picked a couple of up. But that's how you find that institute. So we've got 40 stocks that we are potentially trading in. The system can probably take up to a 10 trades. It is probably fully invested at 10 trades. I think it'll take a while uh, before we're at any one point up to the 10 trades. We need a lot going right. Um, at the moment, we've certainly got stocks going up. But we've got an equal number going down and another number going sideways. And overall, our market is going nowhere. But there certainly are stocks. Capitec had hit an all-time high yesterday, I think. Um, and, and so there are stocks out there to be trading. Make no mistake about that. So what's the process? What's the rules? We've now got our list of 40 stocks. We've opened the chart. So the question then is, firstly, I go to a weekly chart. I go to the weekly chart and I say, which way is this share going? I want to trade long only. What do I want? I want a stock that's gone from going down and it's turned and it's now moving higher. As simple as that in a sense. So what I need then is I need an indicator or an oscillator to tell me that. Now there are, I mean, there are literally hundreds. There are practically dozens of indicators and oscillators that we can use. Stochastics, RSIs, etc. But if you remember my presentation on psychology, I think it was number six um, in, the, in the bootcamp series. In the presentation on psychology, we talk about that belief in complexity. And how, as a human being, we believe that we need more and more complexity and that complexity ultimately is a good thing. And it's not. Complexity is not a good thing, especially in trading. We actually want simplicity. That's what we want in our trading. So we look at stochastic, which is a, a very complex uh, oscillator. And I end up down and I always come back to my MACD. And in truth, in most of my trading, I don't use anything except moving averages. But I go to MACD. Why? Because essentially it's kind of like moving averages. So it's almost a half cheating. But what a MACD does is it gives me a nice uh, process of, of trend change on a weekly chart. There's just a quick screenshot at the top there. You can see the top arrow turn down, bottom arrow turn up. What it does do, like all indicators and oscillators, is it gives you false signals. So there it's telling you, yep, we're going higher, uh, except we didn't. Every indicator and oscillator is going to do that. That's why I'm always going to do a two-step process to get me into the, into the trade. This is the first part of the process. The next part will be, I need that confirmation of it. The key point, I'm also bringing in some of Elder's philosophy here, where I start in a weekly chart, and then I drop down into a daily chart. So I want to start weekly and get that big picture from the weekly. So here we go. This is taking us back to February 2016. I went to Aspen because it gave me an entry a couple of months ago which showed how that process worked and how we would evolve the trade over time. So that, what you're seeing that chart is literally to 29 Feb, uh, which was well, whatever the last trading day of February was. I think it was 29th of Feb was a Friday. So that, that literally takes it through. But let's first look at the circles. Bottom circle. Here you can see the false where it's saying, yep, we're going higher. Oh, no, we're not. Yep, oh, no, we're not. That's why two-step entry. So where the arrows point to, that's the MACD turning higher. I'm not worrying about the zero line. I'm saying when the MACD crosses itself from the extremes, we're interested. Another quick, that other circle there, that happens to be a kangaroo tail. Kangaroo tails are immensely 
rare beasts but immensely powerful. There are reversal patterns. We'll do an entire session on reversal patterns in September. Uh, but of the reversal patterns, along with island reversals, kangaroo tails, absolutely the strongest reversal pattern you're ever going to see. But you might get old and grey waiting for it. Someone called it by its real name. Doji. doji. Is that a doji? There we go. My Chinese is bad. Or maybe it's my Japanese. <laughs> All of my trading happens to come from Australians. I'm not quite sure why, but practically it does. But what's important? So ignore the two circles. They were just for fun. What do we got? This is a weekly chart of Aspen. In other words, five days of trading, Monday to Friday, gets thrown into one individual candle. I don't need to look at it in the candle. I can look at it in line chart, but I always go to candle. It's my preferred method of, of, of doing a chart. My MACD's turned up, it's below the, 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 the zero line, it's turned higher, we can see the little green dots coming, um, it's saying to us the market has turned. You will note it happens a couple of weeks after the market has turned, uh, fully three weeks, four weeks after that low. You're not going to catch the bottom absolutely. If you were trading uh, the kangaroo dojis, yes you might have called that, but that's a different, more aggressive process in the thinking. So you got that three or so weeks after a turn. That's cool. Because you want this turn to be real. You can see the other uh, attempts here where it pretended to turn and almost immediately went against you. What have we got? A turn that has got three green candles. That's saying this thing has legitimacy. I don't want to say it's real, but it has legitimacy to it. So what have we got? We've got a trigger. That's all it is. So your weekly chart says we have got a trigger back in February, end of February of this year. We have got a trigger on Aspen. What do we do? Well, now we say, where do we enter? At what point do we get confirmation that this trigger, that this change in trend is real and that Aspen is going to be moving higher? We've got to find some point at, to put entry. So I use a horizontal line. And to me, there's my horizontal line. So <clears throat> a couple of points about it. If I pulled it all the way across to the left, it's got that little bit there. So there's certainly some friction with it around there. Touches that candle, there's some friction there. And also it's that high there. If we break that, that horizontal line, we've gone through that high there, or that one, two, three. We've broken three of the previous highs over frankly taking us back to November, October of the previous year. This says to me, this thing's real. You know, it's, it's got real legitimacy to it. It really looks like it could be going somewhere. So I'm, at this point, I'm still on my weekly chart. This is going to be a, a Sunday morning or a Saturday afternoon or whenever you do your weekly homework for your trading. For me, Sunday mornings. I'm sitting here and I'm saying, brilliant. I've now got a deal on Aspen. It's looking good. If I get a close above that red line, I'm in business. And there's my daily chart. And there is the same red line. It's now just coming across in a daily chart. And we waited all the way through to June. So for all of March, all of April, nine weeks, we sat, we waited. Aspen was going the right way. But it hadn't yet breached that level. I like it, but I want the confirmation. So what am I doing? A couple of important points. Firstly, when I said lazy up front, you guys had no idea how lazy I meant. I mean proper lazy here. I'm from Durban. Secondly, you're saying to yourself, man, I'm leaving a lot of money on the table, hey? Yeah, imagine if I'd bought the first time I triggered, I would already be in the money. I mean, that, that close there, let's call it 310, I'm entering at 335, that thing's moved 5% and I haven't made any money yet. Yeah. Jesse Livermore, in reminiscence, reminiscence of a stock operator, says it best. The hardest two eighths in trading. Americans do everything in eights. They obviously haven't discovered their thumbs. But if, it, if a share goes, <clears throat> a share turns and goes higher and then turns down. So it's been falling, it turns up, it runs, and then it turns down. If you're trying to catch that top and the bottom, that's hard. Try catch the middle. We used to call it the bit in the middle. Try and catch that bit in the middle of the trend. If you can catch 30% of that bit in the middle, then you're an average trader. If you can catch 50% of that bit in the middle, you're a good trader. And if you can catch 70% of that bit in the middle, you're a top class trader. And even just catching 30% in the bit in the middle is going to make you money. 30% really is where we want to start. We want to push that number higher. We want to get it to 50, 60, ultimately even 70%. But don't stress, because if you're going to be calling these, if you're going to be going saying, oh, look, you also got all, those fa all the false signals. You traded that little green bump there, that little green bump there. 
So yes, you've made money on this trade, but you lost in the previous two. Overall, you're actually a negative. Depending where you put your stop loss depends by how much. But you've had two trades which you entered and exited, you paid brokerage both times, you crossed the spread both times. What are you trying to do? You're trying to reduce the number of trades, you're trying to increase the reliability and profitability per trade. You're never going to get it 100%, but you're trying to improve it. So at this point, we're now entering, as I said, nine, ten weeks later. Question, where do we enter? This is big debate. I've dropped my entry to a daily chart. I'm quite happy with that. We could have left it on a weekly chart, which would still have got us an entry in the same zone. But I dropped my entry to a daily, to a daily entry, um, and I'm getting in, where would I have gotten? I would have gotten so probably on that first green candle that closed above. I'm a little bit aggressive in that space there. You could be less aggressive and say, no, I want a couple of closes below it. Let's first see what happens. But I mean, notice how it runs, it looks good, and then goes fairly back, and then runs again, pulls back, and then finally goes. Would you have waited for that gap candle over here? No. Now, you've had far too many confirmations here. The question is, where do you put your stop loss? Now, I'm going back to that chart for my stop loss. The place I want to put my stop loss is below that kangaroo tail. Approximately uh, 230 rand. That gives me a 30% stop loss. Yeah, I, I just, I, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. So, uh, it would be nice, but I'm going to do daily charts to position my stop loss. Where am I going to put it? Remember, I'm entering the trade at this point. I'm putting it over here. Why there? Well, because we've got all of that traffic there, which has been above it. We've got some highs and lows there. We could have dropped it down to that level. Remember in the risk presentation we did last month, I said, go and just draw lines on charts. Draw stop loss potentials. See what's working. See what's not working. The stop loss is going to be, along with the entry, the hardest part for you. The entry is hard because on that first green candle through, is it, isn't it, isn't And then what happens is you enter, the next day it's green, you're the best trader in the world. You've phoned buddies, you've Facebook poked people you haven't spoken to since 2012 to say, hey, hey, I are a trader. And then look what it did. I mean, it like really, really tested you. Key thing, what do we most, the biggest mistake we make with the stop loss? Put it too tight. We just put it too tight. Of course we do. We want to limit the amount of money that we're going to risk. And if we're doing proper 2%, and I'll touch on that in more detail, if we're doing proper 2%, having a stop loss nice and tight gives us a big position. Now we can make money and be rich by Friday. Give that stop loss space. Now, putting a stop loss at 230 is, even for me, too much space. I mean, I, I'm Denard, and even I decided, you know, that was too much space. But putting that stop loss there, which is around 295-ish, you're entering at around 233-ish, that's nice. That's, that's a decent place to put a stop loss. It gives you wiggle room. It so happens that as it ran, it worked. So I did this, I worked through the chart bar by bar, bar, adding one bar at a time. And I thought we might get stopped there, but then it runs, and then and now it's looking really, really great. One proviso, gaps always get filled. I expect Aspen to come back to that gap. The problem with gaps is whilst when I say gaps get filled is true, it might take 10 years. And, and I kid you not, Die Data had a gap in 1994 that it filled in 2001. Or maybe it was 2002. The theory is gaps get filled, uh, but it might take time. So I'm not stressing that gap. So that's the Aspen trade. You've got your stop loss in place. I'm now moving that stop loss higher. So it was there, and I want to move it to there. Could I move it to my entry? Yeah, too aggressive. Second big mistake we make. We're too aggressive when we place our stop loss. When we change it, again, we're too aggressive with where we move it to. You know, we could put that stop loss, frankly, we could put it there. We could put it there. We could put it there. I've got it there. It's kind of at that low there, it's in a big trunk there. A better place is probably just below that, but I'm comfortable with that stop loss in that position there. So now you've been in the trade at this point, you've now been in this trade since uh, uh, mid-April or so, early June. And it's going, it's making some profit. You were in at about 330 odd, 335, it's sitting up at 380 odd. These charts are, frantically checking my computer, are... Sunday charts. So they don't include yesterday or today's trading. So let's look at a second example. 
Mr. Price, again, what do we see in the circle? We see false breaks on the MACD. Any indicator, oscillator, moving average, crossover, any of those are going to give you false signals. It's why we've got to do two-step entry. Now, we could do the two-step entry in part by adding another indicator or oscillator using MACD and RSI. Uh, I, I prefer the line in the sand, literally and figuratively, the line in the sand. So there was my failed. What have I got? Now we're going back to uh, March of this year, 16th of March. There's my cross. Everything's looking nice. Things are starting to move. Where's my entry? Ah, my entry at this point, I'm putting it above that there. It's certainly a nice break there, which is uh, 200 and some change to 10. There's my entry line on the daily chart, and we're entering somewhere June, somewhere at that point we're entering, depending which one. You will note that what we're seeing here is a fair bit of volatility. You can also go and draw chart patterns on there. We've maybe got flags or pennants and the like, but I'm keeping this simple in a sense that we stuck this line in at 210, which on this chart here, sitting just above that break there, sit it at 210. Uh, within a couple of months, that was March, so April, May, June, again, it's about 8 or 10 weeks. It's gone through, it's bitten in. Again, where's my stop loss? Where I want it is down here. Make no bones about it, but that's far, 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 far too aggressive. Where I'm putting it is at that level there. And initially on the entry, I might have actually put it halfway on that big green candle there. So whilst I would like it, I mean, a stop loss down here at about 160 is a perfect place for a stop loss, but it's 30% away. Now you manage that with position size, that's fine, you reduce position size, but 30% away is, is just, that's not a stop loss, that's a vacation you had in your youth that you've forgotten about. So sticking it at, a, at around the 190 level works, and then this this trade's only just uh, uh, confirmed in the last little bit, um, so we haven't got any more data. That is again up to close on Sunday, 16 July. So we haven't got the further data yet running through. It wouldn't have been 16, Friday, 16 July, of course. Those are the entry processes. We can come back to them if we want in some time, but let's run forward. Let's look at uh, the the, the portfolio size, the positioning of, of the portfolio, and the like. But I'm doing well on time. If there's questions on this, let's grab some questions. Price. Your, your two-step entry is you get your trigger down here on the MACD, which says you're buying. Yeah, that's what price is there. No, that's not saying what price you buy. <laughs> oh. That's just saying, so the first step is buy if something else happens. So the two-step is, the first trigger says buy if. The if is if that line, that horizontal line is breached. The question which you then say is, where do I put the horizontal line? Yes. And that is going to be always the hard part. So that is going to be completely and absolutely subjective in the eye of the trader. But you note what I'm doing is I'm not putting it where it's messy and noisy. What I'm trying to do is find a previous big dip level and I'm sticking it there. Practically. <clears throat> so we had a high here, so I could stick it there. Okay. But that's a bit weak. Um, we had a high there, which also runs through to there, which runs through to there, which runs through to there. So you want multiple breaking points on there. That's a good way of saying it. I could stick it up here. That would be nice. But, you know, I could stick it up here, in which case, when Aspen hits an all-time high, and that again, you've given up far too much. If we go to the, the Mr. Price example, um, I stuck it there at about 210. A, 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 a safer one would be around 230, around that level there, which again runs through, hits that tail and runs through. Right. But the point is we've got to, off, we've got to trade off. We've got to, we've, got to, uh, 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 we, we've got to go a little bit risky. We can't go 100% safe. I mean, we can. Take your money, stick it under your mattress. You know, trading is, is living a little bit on the edge. What we've got to make sure is that we're only living a little bit on the edge. That's what's critically important. That's why, so I'm slightly aggressive on them, sticking it, you know, there rather than there. Uh, ditto on Aspen, um, slightly aggressive, I could have stuck it up, you know, that would be a great place, up 360, 370. But yeah, you know, at this point we're in at 335, so we would be getting the buys at the moment, we would be in again. But now we at least we're in profit. So it add, adds a bit of risk, adds a bit of reward. And that is going to be the hard part, drawing that line. So again, what do we do? <laughs> Get your top 40 stocks, 
and just run through them and just draw lines, just draw horizontal lines, where, sh you know, where it looks like a good place for both stop loss and, and, and entry trigger. So sit down one Sunday morning, go to all top 40 stocks, ignore uh, the FFA and FFB, which is the Fortress A's and Fortress B's. They're too illiquid. I know they're in the top 40, but they're far too illiquid. Um, and we do, so go to every one of those top 40 stocks and put in your line where you say, this is the place at which I would be a buyer because it's breaking up, and this is the place at which I think a stop loss would be. Draw those lines in, stick them there, come back a week later, another week, another week. Just come back, revisit them, see where you... Don't try and maximize it. But just try and get a sense for where it starts to make sense where to put them. And this, the, the horizontal lines are something that you will get better at and get more confident at as you do it more and more. This is something which we gain experience from and get expertise in with practice. Now we can practice, as I said, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the static chart. The best way to practice is with cold hard cash because it tends to focus the mind. Otherwise known as fear. <laughs> Any other questions? Someone on the webcast is saying, what about uh, RSI? Sure. I mean, you know, I use MACD. It's my preferred. If I'm going to go to an indicator or oscillator, I'm a MACD type of guy. But if, you, if, if, if RSI is to you the best thing in the world, you know, use RSI. And, and, and which MACD did I use? Stock standard. I log on to the IG chart. I'm not using pro fancy charts. I'm using their stock standard chart. I click MACD. It pops up values. Should I change them? Why? To what purpose? You know, is there the best MACD numbers in the world? No. Again, it comes back to complexity versus simplicity. We believe in complexity. We believe that our MACD numbers should run to four points past the decimal. We believe that 16.9941 is way better than just 16. It's not. Invariably, what we're going to be doing is retrofitting. So we will find a trade that we missed. What was uh, PPC up 8% last time I checked today? Yes. So we find the trade that we missed and we say, how do we catch PPC? So we go back to yesterday and it turns out a MACD of 16.9411 and we would have caught it. Okay, that worked for yesterday for PPC. Is it going to work for anything else at any other time? Maybe, maybe not. We retrofitting. So if you've got a preference of an indicator oscillator, and it's what I spoke about at the beginning. You can make this your own. You can take this as I do it and do it. So that does, it turns out my stop losses are around 10%. Yeah. So then I start to question myself. So stop losses, my stop losses are around 8, 10, 12 percent away. So then I think, is that just the way my brain and I work or is it perhaps the market that we had? Because although these are Mr. Price and Aspen, which are different-ish, one's medical generics, one's cash sales, uh, clothing and the like, um, you know, could we say that they're broadly moving the same and the like? So I went and played with some others and it does just seem that my eye seems to go to around 10-ish percent. So the cheat, perhaps, maybe, is if you're entering a stock at 440, your horizontal entry line is at 440, where's your stop loss? Well, look at around 400. Don't do 400. <laughs> go do 398 or something. But go look around that zone about 10%. Maybe you go up a bit. Maybe there's an obvious place at 410. Maybe there's a great space at 396, whatever the case is. But certainly in, this <coughs> in, in my you know, drilling the numbers, I'm about 10% away. Yeah, there's no, and I mean, as I said with it, the last month's presentation, stop losses here, it does two things brilliantly. It saves you, keeps you in the game, and it torments you. That's just how it works. So exit on stop. So I'm going to come to it in more detail in a moment. So then the question is, where do we exit? Do we exit at targets? Do we, do, so, so we can do, there's some obvious exits that we can do with, with, with trend lines and the like. We can certainly run at all-time highs. My view is always going to be is that we underestimate how strongly stocks can move and how far they can go. So I went way back in time, um, and I'm going back now, what is it, two years, um, and I get a buy on Capitec at 235 Rand. My system still has me long, and Capitec's now 600. So the trick is, if I had an exit strategy to exit on the upside, where would have I sold my Capitec? Three, 350? If I'm greedy, 400? 
If I'd exit, entered Capitec in the 250s and told you I was holding for 650, you would have carted me out here as a crazy. Except Capitec is a hop, skip and a pony ride away from 650. If we're trading very aggressively, if we're trading uh, charting patterns, if we're trading breakouts, if we're doing swing trading, we need to be very aggressive on our exits. We need to be very aggressive on, on taking exits as we move into profit. If we're going what I call the lazy, gentle, trend-based trading, we've got to let those trends run. We've just got to give them that space and time. And these are trades, uh, running the numbers and it's not an exact science. These are trades where the average trade duration is going to be around 10 months. I mean, you sat two months waiting for an entry. And if you think about it, I'll be with you in a moment, sir. If you think about it, the top performing stocks in the top 40 in any one year are giving us about, you know, the top guys, the, the, you know, when it's Naspass's turn to run or, 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 or SAB Miller or whoever it may be, Aspen, whoever it may be. Those top guys who run in a single year, those winners are all at around 60 or 70%. If we're taking half of that, we're getting about 30%, maybe 35%. We're giving up some to our stop loss, we're down to 25%. And then we're gearing it on a CFD. So it's coming in, and I'm, we'll touch on the gearing in a moment, but it's coming in as a portfolio level at about 50% on, on, those, on those runners. Yeah, so that's the point. I, I don't take profit, I only take a stop loss. I just let it run. You know, the, the trick is, and there's a psychological reason why we want to take our profits, right? Because we take that profit, we lock it in, we get the endorphin hit of we are a trader, we go back to that poor person on Facebook, we poke them again, we say, I are a trader, I made money. Um, and if you're like me, I remember I used to take like, you know, I would take 500 Rand profits, but my losses were like two, three, four thousand. Because we want that hit, we want that thrill, we want that excitement, we want that affirmation. And we solve that problem with perfect trades. Spoken about them before, touching it again. So, so, the, I, 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 so the question is around a trailing versus fixed stop loss. I am using a trailing, but I'm trailing manually in a sense. So if we go to, to Aspen, uh, stop loss was there, moved it to there. If we get another pullback and rush up again, I'm going to move my stop loss to about 340, which will then be in profit. What I'm not doing is saying just give me a 10% trail. And as it moves, it trails. What I'm doing is logging in every evening and saying, I'm in a trade, what do I do with my stop loss? Do I, ca do I move it? And my instinct is always, no. Because I'm scared of overdoing it. So I am moving that stop loss up, but fairly slowly. And as I said, my next move in the stop loss will be to around 340. Entry in this trade, I think, was 333 or 335. So that stop loss is now in profit. Small profit. I mean, it's not, you know, it's in profit of a couple of rand. It's going to buy you a beer, but it's in profit. So the practical, I suppose the admin side, which is never the fun side, but which is critically important. How many to buy, risk, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we have from the charts? The charts have told us what to buy. The charts have told us when to buy. The charts have told us where our stop loss is, but they haven't at any point told us how many to buy or anything like that. So that's where portfolio and position size comes in. I've assumed a portfolio of 50,000. You can probably make it a bit smaller, but you can't push it much smaller. I think if you want to trade equity CFDs, I think 50 is your ideal number. I think you can sneak 30, but you start running into complexities around managing risk properly. First two rules with the risk, 2% of at risk in any single trade. I'll explain that in a moment. So your portfolio is 50,000 Rand. You can risk 2% of that in a single trade. 2% of 50,000 is 1,000 Rand. So you get into a trade, you get stopped, you lose the 1,000 Rand. What that means is that you need 50 losing trades in a row to go bust. Not quite because it's logarithmic, but let's pretend math isn't real and it's actually linear. We can bend math, eh? We're in a trading. <laughs> so you need you don't need fifty, but you probably need twenty-five or thirty before you haven't you can't do proper risk management. 
that's, I don't want to say it's impossible. I'm certainly going to say that's going to be one of the harder things to do in life is 25, 30 losing trades in a row with some methodology and discipline to that methodology. So 2% in any one trade, what does that mean? So what have we got? On Aspen, the entry was 333. The stop loss was 295. Now what practically happens when we log in one day to buy the Aspen position? We know that our stop loss is 295. We don't know what price we're going to pay. As soon as we know the price we're going to pay, now we know how much we can actually practically do in terms of position size. Because a 50,000 Rand portfolio, what you've probably done is done it one of two ways. You've either decided Aspen's the best thing in the world and I'm putting half of the portfolio in it, or you've decided you want to do five trades at a time, so you're going to put 10,000 in at a time. And neither of those works. So in this case, your entry is 333, your stop is 295, so risk per instrument is 38 Rand. In other words, you buy at 333, you immediately get stopped out, you get stopped at 295, you have lost 38 Rand per share. How many can you buy? You divide 38 into the, into the, the, the 1,000 uh, and you get the number of 27. You can buy 27 Aspen shares. In this case, you're buying 27 Aspen CFDs. Value, just over 9,000 Rand. Margin, just over 500. Margin on Aspen is minute. So the trick is, if you went and dropped 10,000 Rand into Aspen as margin, You've got a monster position, a monster position, a, a 180,000 rands worth. That's great if it works. <laughs> From the chuckles, I know that you understand the point is that not every trade works. You've got a nice small position here and As Aspen can go to 295. You know what, if you miss your stop and you get 270, your portfolio is going to be quite fine. I've also gone 2%. I haven't included costs in here. The trick is you're actually going to pay 100 brokerage because brokerage is 0.2 or 100. You're going to pay 100 bucks brokerage. But you've got a decent position, well risked, well managed. If we take the same portfolio, now we're going Mr. Price. Still 50,000, still 1,000 per trade. Mr. Price, entry 210, stop 189. Yes, 21 Rand risk per instrument, number to buy, 48. Value of trade, just over 10,000. So Aspen was just over 9, this just over 10. Margin requirement, 1,000 bucks and change. There's another reason here that's very important. Your margin is only 1,500 Rand in these two trades. It's not, round it off, let's call it 1,500. It's a nice modest margin out there, which means you've got 48,500 sitting in your account earning you interest. Because remember, you're paying interest on these positions. Eh? IG's gone to market and bought those uh, 48 Mr. Prices, and they're charging you interest in that position. So you're paying interest, but you're receiving interest. And that's part of the trick. If you're doing trades that last hours or days or maybe a few weeks, Ah, that, 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 that interest you pay in the position, on the open position, is neither here nor there. But if you've got a trade that runs 6, 9, 12 months, that interest starts to add up, particularly when we hit high interest rate environments. Now, we're not there yet, we are ways away, but at some point in our respective lives, we will get back to high interest rates. What this does is it helps offset that high interest component. At this point, you're positive in interest. You're actually earning more than you're paying. That will swing in time. Next part of the position is two times portfolio geared. You've got a 50,000 Rand portfolio. The maximum exposure you want is 100,000. Remember, your exposure is that 10,000 number, not the 1,000 margin. So you've got about, at the moment, 20 odd thousand exposure. So you want maximum exposure 100,000. So that this entire portfolio is geared what we call twice, which is conservative. Most people, almost everyone I know who trades CFDs, gears their portfolio as much as they can. In other words, they take their 50,000 and they turn it into three, four, five, six hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, whatever the, the, the CFD provider will allow. And quite simply, that's how you go bust. You overgear the portfolio. Speak to the traders who make money trading Garth McKenzie, Warren Peacock. 
Petri Radenhais. Igor can't pronounce his surname. He's <laughs> Serbian. Ask them how much they gear a portfolio. Two, three if they're feeling really, really brave. Garth McKenzie will not gear his portfolio more than three times. There's no better trader in Johannesburg. Why do we, with respect as novices, go and make our portfolio two or three times riskier than the best trader who knows what he's doing and expect to survive? We can push that number in time. In two or three years' time when you've been doing this and making constant money, you can say, you know what, this 2% training wheels, I'm going two and a half times geared. Big time. Gas has been trading 15 years. Uh, Petri Radenhaus will push it beyond three. He will at times push his portfolio to six or seven, but that's when he's in winning positions. He's got five positions. All of them are highly in profit. All of them have stop losses well above entries. Now he's adding to his positions and he's upgearing up the portfolio. So what this is, your Aspen pay trade is a 27 times 380 is 10,000. Your Mr. Price is uh, 48 times 217. These are Friday close values. 10,000, your portfolio underlying exposure is just over 20,000 Rand, uh, which means your gearing is 0.41. You can push it to two. So in other words, what this is saying is that this system will give you at max probably around 10 trades. So you could have 10 open positions at one time. That's quite challenging to be running 10 trades at any one given time. But as we run different stop losses, we'll get different position sizes. It'll shake out. It'll probably settle somewhere around six, maybe seven open positions at a time. And then we've got no more than a thousand rand at risk in any trade. We've got an entire portfolio that's only geared twice. I mean, you need, I mean, forget firing, you know, three finance ministers in four days or anything like that. Those sort of events, those big sort of you know, left field type events, 9-11 and so on and so on, Brexit and you know, wait for, eight, for 9 November when Trump wins and the market gets a spook and crashes. Um, those type of events are going to happen. And if any one of those events happened to this portfolio while you're fully in, it was nasty, it hurt, and you live to talk another day. That's the key point. You came back tomorrow, you were still trading. You still had a portfolio to trade. You're geared at 500,000 here and Brexit happens or Trump wins or whatever the case, we get downgraded by Standard & Poor's. I mean, wait for the surprise on 8, 8 December. We got downgraded? I mean, if you're geared 10 times in a portfolio and that happens, you don't survive. You're lucky if you come out with zero. The point around this, the reason why we're not trying to get rich in a hurry is because if we try and get rich in a hurry, what tends to happen is we get broke double quick. If we try and get rich slowly, we can do it. We can live through our own, no disrespect because I'm talking about myself, incompetence. You know, as a newbie, we're going to make newbie mistakes. I know, did it, got the t-shirt, lost the t-shirt. I was really good at making mistakes. This his system is forgiving. Not just of you, but of markets. And that's what... So, process. So that's all great. We've got the charts. We know where to find the top 40. We know where to find the charts. Everything else is lovely. We know how many to buy or not to buy. What's the process we need to run with? So process is quite simple. On the weekend, as I said, for me, Sunday mornings is my... I, I do... I, Fin weeks and stuff like that. So for me, check all your top 40 charts. There are 40 of them. It's going to take in time. You'll get quite good. Yeah. So when you do it the first time, it's going to be a process. But when you come back a week later, probably not much to do. And in truth, you can set alerts. <laughs> I'll show you that in a second. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. When I was a kid, I mean, I used to use a pencil and a piece of graph paper and stuff like this. Now you just go and you set an alert. And when the triggers, you'll get the alert. It'll happen email, it'll happen SMS if it's got your details, it'll happen in-app alert if you've got the app running on your phone. I'll show you the screen in a moment. I'm also old school, I'm not sure I trust computers. I also want to be in touch of the mark with the market. So I'm going to do that process on a Sunday. The point is, as I said, the first time you do it, it's going to be a whole bunch of PT. Second, third, by the fifth or the sixth or the seventh Sunday in a row, you're running through this in half an hour. You know what to expect. 
you know that 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 uh, uh, I don't know Anglo Gold Ashanti is like no way near a bottom turn because man, it's sitting right up at the top. You've put your lines in places and stuff like that, so the process will be laborious and slow initially. And what I'm going to do in the webcast in two weeks' time, which is the webcast is on the Tuesday, day before we vote, on the that weekend, I'm going to go through all 40 charts. I'm going to set it all up. So if you've done it as well, we can compare notes. We can draw lines. Say, I drew my line here. You drew it there. You know, not that anyone's right. What are the pros and cons of the various different places? So Sunday, or weekend as the case may be, check all your top 40 charts for any new weekly triggers. That's your MACD trigger on the weekly chart. At the same time, put your lines in just so that you're learning around stop losses and entry levels. What you're doing is you're getting into tune with the market. What you'll find in a year's time, and you know, I'll be able to name a stock and you'll be able to tell me its current trading range. You just start to know these shares. If any trigger, you flag it, you set your levels. So how do you flag it? You literally have a trader's journal. You make a note there. You can again set alerts on the price alerts. You say my trigger's at 330. If Aspen goes 3330, send me alert. I need to know. Daily processes, monitor any existing trades. And again, set any alerts. For stop loss moving it higher, being gentle. Do you need to monitor this intraday? Not at all. I'll delve into it in a moment. My thinking here is that you need 10, maybe 15 minutes in the evening. Because all you're doing during the week is on new and existing trades. Which is maybe, in time, will be a half a dozen, six, seven, maybe eight at max. You can do that whole process in 15 minutes. If you're full in the market. You know, tomorrow you have nothing because we don't have the triggers yet. And that's what I mean about lazy. The point of this is it gives you time to have a life. You don't want to be a day trader. A day trader is just another job. It pays well. It's got no bosses. But it's just another job. You want to be surfers or dog walkers or wine drinkers or, you know, important things. <laughs> so weekends is check the charts. Daily you monitor the existing trade. Set alerts for entries. Monitor your stop losses. Adjust them if you think you need to. Be careful with the adjusting. And after a trade is closed, you close the journal. Every trade's got full journal. So on the IG, click a button that creates an image of the chart. Drop it into a, an Excel spreadsheet or, or a Word document or something with, you know, the what, the why's, the how's, the monitoring of it. So that you've got all of these records there as well. And, of course, perfect trade. I'll come to that in more detail in a moment. So here's how you do alerts. If you're in the uh, chart, you click on alerts. It was really that easy. And it asks you a couple of questions. Firstly, I want weekly <coughs> alerts. So the question is last trade, bid offer. I want trade. I'm not interested in bids and offers. Give me trade. Top 40 stocks, nice and liquid. I, I'm alerting on the MACD. And then it gets complicated. So what do you want? So I'm signal line crosses MACD line. So that will alert me on my weekly chart. So I can go and set that up for all of my top 40 shares. And suddenly I don't have to do my Sunday work anymore. I think we do need to do the Sunday work because we need to have some contact with the market. And then price alert. Click. Next that's for chart button. Click. Set price alert. Tell it what a price alert you want. It'll email you. If you've got the app on your phone, it'll give you a push notification, SMS if your number is loaded onto the system. If it isn't, contact the, the call center, make sure it's there. And what I'm doing with my price alert is for my entries and stops. So my entry on Aspen is 3.30. Set a price alert for 3.30. When I get the ping, 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 ping telling me I'm at 3.30, I don't drop everything and rush off and do. I'm like, okay, I've got to get into Aspen. You know, ideally today, but if it's at half past four and I'm, you know, about to board an airplane, tomorrow can probably wait. Although, I mean, I think so these days, you're all out your phone, click, 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 click. But don't be, don't be slave to the market. The market's here to pay us money. And again, the stop loss. Stop loss triggers, yep, we need to get out of it. So, perfect trade. <clears throat> at the end of every trade, you need to mark yourself. It's not about did you make a profit, did you make a loss. 
It's not about was your stop loss too tight, although we can argue about that. These are the seven I use for my perfect trade. I'm not going to delve deeply into it because I've got an entire video in the bootcamp series on it. What in essence I'm saying, what you will firstly see is at no point does it say, did you make profit? Don't care if you made profit. Care if you followed rules. Your target is to do one perfect trade. Just one. And you take those seven, or if you want, adjust them accordingly, however you want. <coughs> but at the end of a trade, you go and you measure it against those, and what you want is seven ticks. And if you're doing perfect trades, and you're doing 2% risk, and you're not giving your portfolio more than two times, I want to say it is impossible to bust out. I'm far too old to say never say uh, never, say never, but it's going to be very hard to bust yourself out. Three things. Perfect trades, i.e. discipline. Do your stop loss for 2%. Do your portfolio geared only twice. I'll say it again. You're not getting rich by any weekend this year. But you know what? Come the end of the year, when you look back at 2016, you will have a couple of successful trades under your belt. Rephrase it. A couple of perfect trades under your belt. You'll have improved confidence. You'll start to think, hey, hey, thinks I can do this. That friend on Facebook better watch out. Trade ticket. You literally hit the name of the stock, Aspen. Boom, there it pops up. Tell them how much you want, tells you your margin down at the bottom. Full size only, I'm happy with the partial full, because I'll manage it, that's moot. In this case, we're buying, how many Aspens did we buy? 21, really full size, I they think they're going to hit it for us anyway. Um, what I'm not doing, <clears throat> excuse me, is putting a stop loss on the system, because it trails. Remember, I want fixed, so I'll manage that via alerts. So I'm also not taking a guaranteed stop loss. One of the benefits of guaranteed stops is reduced margins and the like, but margins are not our problem here. We have more than enough money left over for full for, for margin. So you put a stop loss I don't put a stop loss on the system. I have a stop loss, and I have an alert on the stop loss, but I don't hard program it into the system. Correct. So here's the big question. And I've touched on this before, but I want to touch on it quickly, and my time is hitting tight. So, where do you enter, you know, and when do you exit? I've been saying, you know, here's your line, when it hits it, do you, wait, do you enter the moment it touches it? Do you wait for the daily candle to close through? Do you wait for the weekly one to close through? Uh, you know what? Over a lifetime of trading, it matters less. So, if you, try, if you say, touch my level, I'm in or out. Your risk as it turns on you, so you touch on the buy, and then a minute later it's like, yes, yeah, or you do that, and it collapses in a heap. Um, but you get better entry exits. The inverse is if you wait for a close, uh, lower risk of reversal and going against you, but worse entry exits. I do close. So if I'm trading on a daily chart, my entries are on a daily, I will enter in the closing auction, or I'll enter at half past four, quarter to five if you are above my level. If you're above my level at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm not impressed because I want a close. So I'll wait till the end of the day. I might even catch in the next morning. Is that going to cost me a few rands and cents? Yes, but it's going to give me a much better entry. <coughs> and then as I said, online or manual for the stop loss, I'm doing manual. So in closing, it's a slow system, it's a gentle system. It's got my name written all over it because I'm certainly slow. I'm lazy. Um, 10, 15 minutes per day, Monday to Friday, well, Monday to Thursday, half an hour on, 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 on the weekend to manage this. When it's up and running, a bit more initially, which means we've got time. We've got time to trade other systems because we're going to do six of these over the next six months. So next month we're, talking, uh, we're going to be talking indices. You can go trade indices in a different methodology, FX in another. But this is designed to make money as much as it is to, to keep us alive. Top 40 only, long only. Two-step process for entry, always, because of the unreliability of indicators and oscillators. And these trades will run for ages. I mean, we're going to get trades that come out of this that are going to be... Yeah, we'll probably get a trade at some point, which is run for a couple of years. That Capitech trade I mentioned, which is completely theoretical, and I didn't even bother to use it because it's too, too extreme... Um, is, is approaching 22 months old. 
Risks. Always risks. So, equity. Shares are risky because they're more volatile. Because someone comes out and something happens and suddenly PPC is up 8% in a day, when frankly I think PPC is going bust. And if you're on the wrong side of that 8%, you just got carted. Uh, so certainly equity. But we manage that with wider stops to manage the volatility so we're not getting kicked out. Gearing is a risk. Your CFDs. We manage that by portfolio gearing of only two times. Bad entries are a risk. We manage that with a double entry system. Bad exits are a risk. We manage that with discipline. That's up to you and me, the individual. Stop loss comes and we're like, nah. Either we don't want to lose the money, but remember, 2% rule, it's a small amount of money. Or we're like, nah, but you know what's going to happen? We're going to get stopped out and this thing is going to the moon without me. I have two words for you. African bank. <laughs> The most important thing a trader does is obey a stop loss. Every single time. I make money trading. I mean, you see my technical analysis. This is not... I mean, Goth's son does better technical analysis than me, probably. Sitting on his father's knee, three years old. <laughs> what makes me money in the market? I'm a wizard stop loss. Not positioning. Actioning. 16 years and 5 months, every single time a stop loss is fired, I have exited. Every, every single time. There is zero exception. Zero exception. Trader risk. That's me and you. We are frankly the biggest risk to the whole process. Perfect trade. That's how we manage ourselves. Your first top goal is to do one perfect trade. And then a second. I've now done 108 across all my trading systems. I've done 108 perfect trades in a row. My goal, 109. But I understand I'm the Hashan Amlo of perfect trades. Eh? Triple centuries. In fact, I'm the Brian Laura. Quintinkical. What do you call it? Five times centuries. I want hundreds. I just want, want 100. I want hundreds and hundreds of perfect trades. And if I botch a trade, I go back to zero and start counting again. So have a plan. Trade a plan. This is a plan. We talk a lot about the plans and the like in the New Year's resolutions video, number seven in the bootcamp series. If the whole thing's a bit daunting, open a demo account. If you've got a demo account, start doing this in a demo account. Start the demo, move in. You know, we're in a hurry. I know, we're in a hurry. We want to be rich before Trump so we can go move somewhere else where he doesn't know about yet. <laughs> Actually, Trump probably has never heard of South Africa. He probably knows Africa's like that way. Or that way. You know, the world is round, so actually both ways. Um, start slow. The key, one of the key things of the demo account is to learn what you do, where to click. Because the last thing you want to be doing is opening a trade, right? Which is a stressful situation. And now you're like, where do I click? Well, what does that really mean? <laughs> hey, what's that like? You don't want to do that in real time. You want to do that in the demo. So that when you've got cash on there, it's like, hey, click, 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 ching, ching, ching. It won't be, of course, because there's real money, so there'll still be sweaty hands. But at least the sweaty hands are about the money, not about, hey, man, how does this thing work? <laughs> next webcast, we're going to bring the charts, bring the questions. So next one is 2nd of April, one at uh, August. 1 p.m. So all of these sessions will be live here at IG, webcast, and then two weeks later, a webcast-only event. Um, if you're in the session here at IG, you just go to uh, 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 justonelap.com slash events, <coughs> sign up for that webcast. On the weekend before, I will go through the top 40 shares. Let's see which triggers are out there. We'll start drawing some lines. Maybe we get some trades in the next two weeks. I'm not sure. You can come back with questions and queries and anything you've got in that space as well. And then we are back again in uh, August for index trading. And then September, reversal patterns. And then we do lazy, we do moving average, and we do binaries, which is October, November, and December. Contact details for myself, simon at justonelap.com. Otherwise, justonelap.com is where you find me. Contact details for IG. Lawyers. Make money, it's yours. Lose money, no longer yours. Sad. <laughs>
and I've hit my time on the nose. Ladies and gents, I'm going to park it there for this evening. Uh, the video will be online tomorrow, let's say after lunch. Go grab it there. Uh, join us for the webcast in two weeks. If you can't, that video will also be online, so you can grab that in two weeks' time. Uh, more than happy, send me emails, comments, tweets if you've got feedback, if you've got ideas, if you want to tweak it. Of course, tweaking is always there. This is what we call open, open, what? open source trading, in a sense. Ladies and gents, thank you very much for your time this evening.